Hello, my name is Philip Cameron, and I'm so glad you could join us today. I've got my daughter Melody with me, and we're going to be sharing with you some exciting things that's happening in Eastern Europe. And I recently took a wee visit, not to Scotland, but to the Emerald Isle of Ireland. And you're going to see a little piece from there as well. I am so glad you have joined us. I hope we bless your lives today. Welcome to Daily Faith. In the 1890s on this west coast of Ireland, these four islands, one of which I'm standing on right now, were the most poverty stricken places in the whole nation. And in the 1890s, they developed a scheme. They decided to do something to break poverty. And how they did it was they built bridges. An amazing thought. They connected the, these desolate places to the mainland and by doing so brought people and brought commerce and brought materials and has turned desolation into a place of life and we've been driving here and there's trucks and there's horse drawn you know cars hauling horses and cows and and the schools and there's churches all because someone had a vision to build a bridge there are areas of your life that need a bridge to be built towards. It may be a relationship, it may be health, it may be finances. I don't know what it is, but you have the power to have the, the faith and the vision to build a bridge. And by doing so, I promise you, life will flow from heaven into the desolate circumstance of your life. You can be a, build, a, a bridge builder and do what happened here naturally way over a hundred years ago someone had a vision and I hope that today that you are the person that has the vision for your family to build the bridge that will change a life talk about a cold and windy day it was howling a gale I'm amazed the audio took place and it was cold and uh, I stood there, but that is an amazing story. These islands were desolate islands sitting by themselves. And in 1890, someone said, why don't we connect them with a the road? Just a wee bridge, nothing important. No one will, I doubt if it'll ever appear on a magazine or anything else, but the bridge brought life. And it was crazy. What blew our mind was the parking lot that I was standing in was the parking lot of a school. And the kids had just got out, and I mean, I was astonished. And when we found out, I, I don't even know, I think we talked to someone, and they said in the lovely Irish, you can't tell the difference, but I can tell the difference between an Irish per person speaking and a Scottish person speaking. And this fella told us, he said, all these bridges are new bridges. <laughs> the new bridges, they're, all, they're built in the 1890s. Yeah. And what it did was it connected people the only way up to that point was to get around by a boat. And the Lord spoke to me talking about that. As, Do you know that you are only as strong as the bridges of your life? There are people that you've cut yourself off from. And by doing so has impoverished you. My mom used to say all the time, don't cut your nose off to, spo to, to, to spo spite your face. Don't cut your nose off to spite your face. And I'm telling you, the Lord wants you to know that there are people that you've cut out off of your life. You've cut the bridges down. You've destroyed the bridges. And by doing so, you've impoverished yourself. Jesus came into this world. You talk about the bridge of bridges. God's relationship with mankind had been severed through sin. In the garden, Adam and Eve had severed that bridge. God had set up a new way by which man could reach him and that was through the sacrifice of animals but every you imagine the weight of responsibility every time you wanted to talk to God you had to slaughter an animal a perfect lamb or a sparrow or a bullock examined by the priest to be absolutely flawless 
and, this, and the time and the expense of, of trying to bridge the gap to God. And by doing so, it was always never enough. And as soon as the blood was shed of the animal, your sin came through again and it had to be repeated over and over again. And then one day, God in his infinite love and mercy looked at you and me and somehow found value in us. And it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the bridge of all bridges, the bridge of all bridges was made through Jesus Christ. And I challenge you today, I really feel that you need, there's someone in your life that you need to call. I know how busy life is. I know exactly how you can get out of touch with someone. And before you know it, it's three months and then it becomes six months and then it's a year. And then there's no point in even thinking to reconnect. That's how it happens. But somehow in my life, in my spirit, I know that in your life and in my life, there are people that you need to connect with and say to them, we are in it together. And by doing so, a new relationship will be born. A new victory will be given. And God will be glorified. Father, in Jesus' name, as we talked about those bridges in that very cold and windy place in Ireland and saw the impact of someone having a big enough vision to look past all the history and all the different things that had gone before and said, Lord, or, or we'll build a bridge from this island to the next island and then to the next island. And by doing so, transformation took place. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will become the bridge builder in your family. You've got a family member, a son that you haven't talked to for a long time, a daughter, a mom or a dad. Why don't you do this after this program is finished? Determine that before this day is out, I'm going to, I'm going to fix that bridge. I'm going, to get, I'm going to rebuild that bridge. And the moment you do, I promise you, enrichment will come into your life. Blessing will come into your life. You might be right. You might be the one that was right and they were wrong. But if your heart is wrong and your spirit's wrong, you're just as wrong as they are. One time I, my sister Wendy and I were fighting. We're having an argument just like kids in the house. And, and my, my dad heard my sister talk to me. And uh, it was kind of funny looking back now. And he says, Wendy, 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 stop, 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 stop. Don't, don't talk to your brother like that. And my sister snapped at my dad and she says, well, at least I'm civil. And my dad burst out laughing at, at Wendy. And she started laughing and she got the idea that maybe she had been so civil after all. And I just want you to be the healer of your family. We believe in household salvation. Our whole family believes that the promise of God is for you and for your children and for your children's children. But if you're the only link they have to God, the gospel, if you're a grandma right now and you're the only person in your family that knows Jesus, if you're a mom and your son's unsaved, you being right and them being cut off doesn't make anything work. You being right and that bridge being broken doesn't, doesn't get them saved. Why don't you today do what that fellow, whoever he was in Ireland over 100 years ago, 130 years ago. Say, I believe I'll take the time and the expense to build a bridge to these isolated people and by doing so, create the miracle of connection. And I do, I really feel this. I pray for connection in your family, that the broken parts will be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll be back in a moment. Watch this. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. 
To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. My great-grandfather and grandfather came back from the First World War. My granddad had been injured, wounded in his back and shoulder with shrapnel, both of them alcoholics. In the trenches in France where they fought, my granddad went through the Battle of the Somme where 82,000 men died in a day. And he survived. And how they got these young boys to climb out of these trenches. And they would fight for months over a couple of hundred feet of ground. And uh, they would give them rum and brandy to give them the courage to go up and fight. Most horrendous thing. My grandfather never recovered. My great-grandfather was so m mentally broken by it that he spent most of his life sleeping outside. He wouldn't go inside a building in case the Germans bombed it. Horrendous. George Cameron's his name was. And um, when he finally, he was dying, and they took him inside, and he was Ill illiterate. And our whole family had been, I, I wasn't born at this time, but my whole family had been praying for him. They just got saved. And my grand, great-grandfather sat up on his bed, and he says, that's right, Jesus. Write my da name down in that book, G-E-O-R-G-E-C-A-M-E-R-O-N. And he passed away. That's how he died. My grandfather came back from the First World War, an alcoholic. Wasted his life. His stomach had been destroyed by alcohol. And he, he gave his life to Jesus. He was taking my grandma down to watch Joe Lewis box in the cinema. Uh, there was no movies, uh, TVs in those days. And something said to him, go and hear your son Michael preaching. In the tin hall, it was made of corrugated tin. A little hall with a public kind of building that they would have events in. And my Uncle Michael was preaching there, and my granddad went to hear his boy preach. And at the end of the service, when my Uncle Michael gave out the appeal, just a handful of people in the church, or this little building, actually. And my granddad says something lifted him out of his seat and brought him to the front. And an alcoholic of 42 years was born again in an, an instant of time. After a few days, this is the truth, after a few days, the bartender from the pub he frequented and lived in came to our house, uh, uh, my granddad's house, and knocked on the door and said, are you okay, Michael? We haven't seen you for a couple of days. We're wondering if you're sick. And my granddad says, I'll never come and see you again. Jesus Christ saved me. And the bartender laughed and says, ah, you'll be home. You'll be back in a few days. 22 years later, my granddad died on the sidewalk of our hometown in Scotland, giving our gospel tracts. And the name of the gospel tract was Smile, God Has the Answer. Alcoholic family with no hope found Jesus because of that bridge. And I urge you to get this book. This book will absolutely give you... See, a lot of times when you're believing for something, you don't know how to... You can't put a handle on it. You know what I mean? Sometimes I believe God for things and I don't know really how to begin to believe because it's, it's just, it's like a wall of impossibility. And then you get a key and you get a foothold and you get a little, little bit of understanding. And then when you pray, you pray with more effect and you, you pray more directly. And then the devil begins to feel the impact of a prayer that has knowledge behind it and word behind it and testimony behind it. Because the devil, if you, if you resist him, the Bible says, he will flee from you. And that's what this book will help you do. It will help you stand and say, devil, I'm having a full house. Rahab the harlot said, I'm having a full house. When they marched on the walls of Jericho, our whole house, all our family was in our house. And the walls fell down except her house. Not all the walls of Jericho fell down. One part was left. And that was the bit that she was in. And, and Rahab the harlot had a full house. And I urge you, the, the numbers on your screen, 833-324-5932. If you want to spell it out, it's Daily Faith. And um, you just call the, the, the counselor and say, I would love one of those books from Philip. I've got walls that I need to tear down, and I want God to resurrect and build bridges of salvation to every nook and cranny of my family. None. When, when Moses went to Pharaoh and Pharaoh says, leave your kids, 
This was, this was the response from Moses. Not a hoof will be left behind. I'm leaving nothing. We are all going. And what the devil needs to hear from you today is to say, devil, I'm not giving up on one of my family. I'm fighting for every one of them and none of them are going to be left behind in darkness. If you are God's contact person, if you are God's bridge for your family, I can feel this in my spirit as I'm talking to you. You are there for the purpose of household salvation. You are the contact that God's looking for to break into your family, build bridges in the darkness, and tell the devil, get out of my home, get out of my family. They're part of my inheritance. It's a lamb for a house. Me and my house will serve the Lord. And you have the authority in the name of Jesus to tell the devil to get lost. And this book will help you do it in the name of Jesus. My wife, Chrissy, did a tremendous thing last Christmas, and she made up a container. And we want you to help us do the same thing. You're going to love this video. Watch this. <laughs> Here we are in probably what is the coldest day that I've had in, since I arrived here in Moldova. But you know what? We don't care. The container has just arrived. We have all the reinforcements here ready to help. So we're going to empty it as quickly as we can because the driver has to turn around and do the long drive back to, to Romania. So thank you, everybody, who made it possible. We appreciate it. We couldn't do it without you. So from everybody here, from everybody in Orphan's Hands, Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, now, now it's time to work. Hello. Uh, firstly, I want to thank God because he put the desire in your soul to help us. And of course, I want to thank you for your kindness for your help and for everything you are doing for us. We are very happy and very thankful. God bless you. Dear friends, as you can see, we are really excited that the container is here. So thank you so much for believing in our vision and for making this day possible. For most of our girls and boys, this is their first Christmas that they will celebrate with us. So. This container is more than just a container full of stuff and gifts. This is an act of love and of care that you showed towards the lost ones. So thank you so much for believing in us. Hello, dear people. We are so excited that the container finally arrived. Although the Christmas has passed already in Moldova, it feels like Christmas all over again, and we are so excited. Uh, you know, uh, we just want to take the time and take each and every one of you from the bottom of our hearts, because you took the time and put a box together for the new kids, and um, it feels new every time a container comes, and because we have new kids and everything is new, and they uh, get to experience this the first time. So we're very excited and we're very thankful uh, we can say enough how um, thankful we are and how much we appreciate um, your thoughtfulness and your kindness and your care and your support. So thank you very much from the Orphan Sands and uh, we love you very much. <laughs> oh, can't you feel it? I can just feel the joy in their hearts. Many of those kids had never, ever had a Christmas before. And when that container, this year, this last Christmas, for some reason the container got stuck somewhere. I think it was in Italy or the weather or something, and it was late getting in past Christmas time. And uh, the, I, I, was, I was quite honestly very upset. And they says, we don't care, Dad. Just get the container here. And when it came, it brought Christmas with us. My wife, Chrissy, 
is there. And that's proof I have a wife. You've got a mom. <laughs> and uh, I, I try to get her to come here all the time. And she says, oh, I don't like being on TV. I don't like being on TV. I don't do yeah. well on TV. And I think she just does great right there. She does. She does a good so time. when you go home, tell your mother that she needs to do this yeah. more often with us. But our container right now needs to be sent. And I'm asking you to pray about helping us. You have no idea the joy. You have no idea. Imagine living in a garbage can all your life with no hope, barely alive, always hungry. The kids tell me they went to bed every night of their life hungry. The kitchen closed after their measly supper at 5 o'clock. And they went to bed every night hungry. When we opened our houses, one of the people said to us, well, if you, if you open your house and, and you don't have a lock on your fridge, they will, they will steal everything from your fridge because the orphans are, are thought so badly of. And I said, there'll be, there'll be a lock on the fridge of that house and that fridge when, when I have one in my house. And um, it never happened, of course. They, were, they, they grew and developed and, and found it amazing. But if I, could, if I could somehow impart into you the hope that that brings... You have no concept. Every day of the life, someone talking bad to them. You're garbage. Your mother doesn't want you. Your father doesn't want you. You'll never be anything. Nothing plus nothing always adds up to nothing. Dash, one of our girls, was writing her name on our desk. And the teacher came up and she says, you better erase that. And, and she says, you wouldn't want your daughter to see that when she comes here, do you? That's, that's the thought process. When I first met the girls, on, uh, the three girls on the park bench, the, the crazy thing was that they were, they were painting the rooms and the, the teacher that was overseeing them painting their dorm kept saying to them, do a good job. You better do a good job because your kids will be here soon. That's what they're told every day. Constant. And when we come along and we say to them, if you're born, God has a plan. You're not a mistake. God cares for you and loves you. He knows your name. Your name's written on the palm of God's hands. The effect that it has is electrifying. And it begins with a gift. You'll notice these are not just shoebox sizes. These are major gifts. I mean, these are made personally for the person. My wife finds out what color they like and all that, the size they have. So there's no big clothes in a small kid's box. I mean, it's personalized. And that act of kindness by Chrissy and Melody, just, it's a statement to a, an empty heart that God loves you and cares, a bridge. It's amazing. And also, I don't want to forget, Dad, that as well as all these gifts, you know, these kids work hard all year long. And yeah, this yeah. is kind of our, our way of saying, you know what, you're important. And now, you're, you're talking incredible. to kids in, in, in orphans and houses. Yeah, and, but we okay. also, we're, we give um, gifts out to poor families in the yeah. villages. But also, on the, you know, we, we talk about container, and we know what a container is. And people are like, what's a container? I don't know what a container is. But it is a 40-foot box truck like a you know you see them driving down there those corrugated metal um, trucks well the the box comes off the back and it, it goes on to a ship and sails across the world on a boat and then they take it off and put it back on a truck and and that's what we call a container but as well as the christmas gifts we've got um all the things that the kids need for outreach for the following year Books. we've got um, blankets for the homeless, and we've talked about them um, living in tents in the winter. Um, we've got everything. We've got diapers. We, we um, minister to a, a handicapped orphanage full of young men, and we have diapers for, Men's, yeah. for their Mine needs. Depends, yeah. We have cl um, book bags for families who don't have enough to provide for their kids to go to school. So this is more than just... Um, the joy of Christmas. This oh, is a whole is year, a whole year of ministry and, and what our kids do, changing other lives. And what our kids do is they'll, they'll adopt a village. They'll sponsor a whole village. And they'll identify every widow in that place, every broken family in that place, every poor family. And they spend the year going and knocking on the doors, weekly, bi-weekly, depending on the weather. If it's really cold, they buy them bags and bags of coal, wood, whatever they need, bring them oil and all the food stuffs they need. And literally, orphans that have had no hope in their own lives. How we've discovered to break the orphan spirit is to get them to give. And they give away stuff that they would never be able to afford themselves. 
They give things to, to broken people. And by giving to broken people, they are healed themselves. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And you can be a part of it. I need your help. A dollar a day. For every 120 people that give a dollar a day, we can sponsor another house full of kids. You can, you can give a dollar a day. These containers cost $9,000 each. Someone can give a whole container. But if 90 folk give $100, the container gets to go there as well. Whatever you feel to do, you can contact Melody personally at the ministry and talk to her if you would like. It's really easy to do that. Um, if, you, if you email, just um, Philip, D. Cameron with one L, philipdcameron.com. Or you can call us and um, the numbers are on your screen. And you can say, I want to know how I can help. And I know I'm talking to someone that could really make a big difference in our ministry over there. I'd love to hear from you. Everyone is bridges of hope and faith. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.